the names that we're given and the names that we give ourselves are pretty darn important. So at school and at church and different kind of American settings, my sister was known as Sarah and I was known as Sam. But when we were home, when we were with our Indian community, when we were back in India, we were known as Jiju and Gina. And anytime anyone called me Jiju, it was an immediate rush of connection to culture and community and love. My name is Andrew. I am transgender. And oftentimes when people find that out, their first question is, so what's your real name? My real name is Andrew. What you're asking about is my dead name. Essentially, the reason that it's called a dead name is not because the person we were is dead to us, but because of the feeling that it makes us feel. It kind of kills us inside, <laughs> or at least for me, that's what it does. It makes me tense up and become extraordinarily uncomfortable because that's not who I am. For me, names have a lot of emotional significance, and depending on which one you use, will strongly determine how I feel. My name's AJ. Pretty simple, right? Well, apparently too simple for a lot of people. A lot of times when I meet people in a social or semi-professional settings for the first time, I introduce myself and more times than I'd like to count, their second question is, what's AJ stand for? My answer is usually my name. My name is AJ. That's what you should call me. Like, why do you need to know what AJ stands for? Are you gonna call me something different? Because I'll be honest with you, it's not gonna work. There you go, there's my name, AJ. It's my name. So when it comes to name mispronunciation, I've got a couple stories to tell. More often than not, I am uh, associated with a city in Texas. That's right, Daleks. Often sounds like Dallas, Daleks. You know, people ask about the spelling, and I'm like, it's very simple, it's just Alex with a D. Daleks. 